Today, I will be talking to these two legendary entrepreneurs, um, Steve Chen and Patrick Grove. So I'm so excited to have these two legendary people here today, and we're going to be talking about what we like to call a blueprint for disruption. Could you two please share your most pivotal moments in your entrepreneurial journey? What was the aha moment of realization when you knew that your idea was going to be a success? When we created YouTube, we took a guess that the most number, the most abundant number of videos were going to be in the category of dating videos. For one week, it was a dating site. We got zero videos uploaded uh, for a week. And after that week, instead of calling it quits, we decided, why don't we completely open it up and then don't force any type of categorization on the videos, just let any videos in. And so I think um, I would say that that decision ended up being a lot of the pivotal moments for YouTube to turn into what it is today. That's incredible. And um, Patrick? I think about it quite differently, right? And I don't, I don't think there's like one thing, right? I think when you're an entrepreneur and you build a product and you have passion for your product, there, th there's never an ending. There's never a moment where you say, oh, wow, like, I, like I've done it. Like, you just, it just keeps going and going. And, you know, someone might see that, hey, this is a great thing you've done, but you see the problems, you see the faults, you see the stories behind the scenes. And so I think I'm quite unique, and it's that, it's, it's a constant journey, and, and it never ends. And, and I love the journey, and, and, I, and, I, and I just love it so much. So for me, it's not about the destination. It's just really about the journey and giving all in and just building and building and building. What's the biggest mistake that you remember making, especially now when you know better and you can look back and realize that was a rookie entrepreneur mistake? I mean, so many. Like, like so, so many, right? There's no one mistake. And... You know, I think as an entrepreneur, and I'm not, I'm not like, like how many of us are entrepreneurs in the room? Just kind of show hands. Yeah. Do you find that you wake up every day and there's about a thousand things on your to-do list? Like there's never, it's never a day with three things and you do those three things and by five people like, that was a great day. I got everything. Like it just never, like the grind, the hustle just never, ever ends, right? And so I think it's, it's just accepting that it's, it's a, it never ends. You gotta love what you do. You gotta have incredible passion for whatever it is that you're trying to build. And you know, like I said before, like you just gotta keep going. Well, I think uh, a lot of people think uh, when we decided to sell YouTube um, to Google in 2008, uh, seeing how much change and how big it's grown since then, I think many people, the first question that they would ask is, uh, do you regret selling YouTube to Google? Um, and, uh, you know, I think looking back, of course, I think there's a, a who would have known this was the trajectory that it was going to go on. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of a twist on the, the, the question and answer, but uh, at the time, I still think, looking in hindsight, even 15 years later, I mean, there's no way that YouTube would have been successful without the kind of the hand-holding and the guidance of Google. And that's, I think, a lot of the things that go behind the scenes that don't, don't show up. Uh, there's... Uh, there's Universal Music and EMI, Sony, BMG, the Universal. Um, there's Viacom lawsuits. There's, there's a lot of things that were all happening in the background that a 58-person startup just can't handle without a much larger, much larger legal team, really, um, of Google. So um, I think that uh, you know, the, the often seen as one of the early decisions about making that mistake too early I actually, even now, looking back, I think it still was the right decision back then and now. Now that you're both investors, what qualities do you look for in new founders and new startups and new entrepreneur businesses that you're investing in? I, I think earlier stage, I look just for the entrepreneurs because a, a large part of it is that uh, look, if they have a track record, um, uh, they're going to be able to pivot to the right solutions. It's not necessarily for me that um, they must be, it must be a complete solution that I'm aligned with, but it's rather they have a track record of being able to uh, go down one route and then very quickly be able to pivot as the market variables start coming in. Right. Yeah, I mean, exactly like Steve said, right? I think there was a famous study that said, would you rather back someone that had an A-plus business plan and, like, B-plus hustle, or would you rather back someone that had A-plus hustle and a B-plus 
business plan, right? And all the top successful investors, I'd rather back someone with incredible hustle and a shitty business plan. Because if you have incredible hustle, you will eventually figure out the best business plan. Okay. And, and back to your point, right? And back to what I was saying about the five Ps. Like, you, when you look at all the successes of great ideas, it's the ability to pivot and realize this is not working out the way I want it to work. I need to tweak it. I need to change it. And I have the, I have the passion and the hustle to keep iterating until it works. Thank you, Steve and Patrick. And thank you, everybody, for being here.